I enjoy checking out other rigs, be they trailers or full RVs. Particularly when I'm in a campsite, I usually walk around several times and see who came in and ask about the rigs. In the case of the teardrop trailer, it's been something that's been in the back of my mind all along to check as maybe the next evolution of my traveling. And there's no better iconic trailer than Vistabule. The folks at Vistabule were kind enough to let me come through and ask a lot of questions, and they gave me a brief tour. The audio of the tour is not very good, but I hope you'll enjoy it anyway. Hello, we're at the Vistabule Teardrop Trailer Factory, and I'm talking with Lily Taylor. Hi! Hello, everyone! What do you do here, Lily? Uh, so I do a little bit of everything. Bert Taylor, who is the owner, that's my father. Um, but I do a lot of customer service stuff, uh, mixed in with some bookkeeping. Um, I don't know, a little bit of everything. I wear a lot of hats. So tell me a little bit about the typical buyer that's interested in these trailers. Sure, so most of them are um, empty nesters. So they're gonna be usually people without kids that are just looking to adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, people that have been tent camping for quite some time and they're just kind of sick of setting up the tent and breaking it down. Cool. Yeah. Did you notice a change in the type of buyers when COVID came in? You know, not really. It's still stayed the same for the most part, but I am starting to see younger buyers. I'm pretty excited about. I do know when I stop at uh, campgrounds and there somebody has a teardrop trailer, no matter what it is, it attracts a lot of attention. Yes. So people. it's an iconic shape that draws people to find out more. Yes, it is it's memorable. People say it's like um, being uh, like a beetle. Or it's a rock retro. Star. Yeah. It's very retro. <laughs> yeah. That's why us old people like these. Yeah. <laughs> um, what have you done differently when COVID arrived to keep up with demand? Um. We had to do kind of Zoom showings, things like that. We had to um, do our orientations outside in the hallway instead of in the shop. But basically we have so much space here, which you guys will see. Um, so we could kind of keep things the way it was. We were masked the whole time, but mm -hmm. not, a, not a huge change for okay, us. Okay, cool. All right, well, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate very, it. Yeah, you know, thanks, now everyone. we're off on the tour. Yay! Hey, yeah. <laughs> And then when Bert first started, when they first started working them, he was actually using raw uh, airstream skins. And then they went to public So this is like the place where all the stuff goes for the campers where we start putting stuff together. They're just different workstations. They use the one back there to put the aluminum skins together. And this one tends to be like bed parts and windows. And then they keep all of the camper skins in here. So the sides and has the, the Has the basic design been the same for a long time? It has. So it, the improvements have been in mostly in components. Waterproofing. Components. Waterproofing. Um, some of the stove and the sink components. Yeah. Some of the are that kind of more efficient, battery efficient. So the, uh, the cabin. This is what we call the guts of the camper, so it's where all the wiring is held, and he's putting together the next spot that we're doing right now. So, okay, what kind of wood is used? Uh, birch ply wood. So is this Baltic birch? Looks like it. I think so. That's what I built my insides out of. Beautiful stuff. And then here's frame storage. This is a table saw and heavy equipment over there. We also have a CNC machine, mm -hmm. which is here. On this station over here, we build the doors and the hatches. Do you, what, is, what do you not make as far as the basic unit, or do you fabricate all of the shell yourself? So we get all of our wood CNC and finished from another okay. vendor. And some of the plastic pieces that we use come from the CNC also. I can show you where that stuff is too. That's probably a great help as much yeah. many pieces as there are. This is the hatches and then after the Alex is making air conditioning vents right now. These are all the doors go when we're finished and we start making them putting up to put on the trailers. And then here is where we are just starting to 
to assemble the next five trailers. So you do five? You do? We do a run of ten, but we do five on each side. So we're in the process of. Now I think I remember you have an off-road option. Is it just beefy components or? Um, no, it was just the clearance of the tires, but we actually have changed them all to off-road now. Oh, okay. So there is no difference between This them. one went through a tornado. <laughs> this one's just being started. <laughs> Dorothy! <laughs> That's cool. Like I said, these cars are all ready and just waiting to get picked up. These are so iconic looking and so cool. Yes. I looked at half a dozen and I can't remember the other brands and I kept coming back to looking at these because it just like the shape is, and how they're done. This is what we call the triage area right here. This is like for campers that have problems that they're having a hard time figuring out. It takes a long time. Like this is a super old one. This is actually the raw aluminum before we went to powder coating. And wow. it's having uh, the galleys. The way the galleys are made have changed a lot because it's where most of the leaking took place. So trying to figure out how to get the old style to stop leaking is challenging. And those... Axles. Axles and then here's where we prep to put the... We call it barn raising when we put the sides on. And there's a lot of prep work that needs to be done to the CNC wood that comes in before we put it on the camera. So people drive in here and... They drive into that hallway and we push, push a camper up there and put them up. So I'm on their way to a pretty extensive orientation. Can these be pushed by a person or do you have a little uh, well, trolley thing? I can push a camper around. They're really light. They're only between 1,500 and 1,700 pounds. They're really light. One that bad. was in the hallway that we walked by, Kurt was taking to a new CNC company to check it out and I pulled it out of the storage and put it up there. So it's possible to get one that's under 1500 or not anymore? Oh, so it starts there.